Hi everyone, welcome to the part 2 of our Apollo X walkthrough. Today we'll be taking a look at the console software, which is a crucial part of the universal audio interfaces. But before we head further, let's take a look at the inputs and outputs for the X8P model. This ties up with the console software, so it's good to keep this in mind before going further. Here's the quick breakdown. The XAP is a 16 by 22 audio interface, which means you have 16 inputs and 22 outputs. You have eight analog to digital converters, which are going through the combo inputs or the DB25 connector or to the high Z connectors in the front. They share the same path, so it's not the combo inputs plus the DB25, it's one or the other. In that regard, the combo inputs will override the DB25 and the high Z inputs on the front will override both of them. One cool thing about the inputs is that you can bypass the preamps entirely through the console software. But this is something that I see very often on Gearslet Strad, so I think the crowd will be happy to know this. You can access the converter directly through the TRS on the combo inputs or through the DB25 inputs. All right, moving on to the outputs. We have the monitor outputs, two headphone outputs, which have their own dedicated paths, plus the DB25. In this case, it's really plus the DB25. It's not like the inputs, which share the same path. Uh, the DB25 doesn't share the same path as the monitor in the headphone outputs. So you really have 14 channels of digital to analog conversion. So that leaves us with a 8 by 14 audio interface if we just consider the onboard converters. Last but not least, we have eight more inputs and eight more outputs on ADAT. You can see that the X8P has two ports for each, so you can operate at higher sample rates like 88.2 or 96K. There's also word clock in and out for sync and a talkback mic, which is very convenient if you have the Apollo right in front of you in a control room environment and you can record from the talkback mic. So it's a, a, a handy tool for capturing a sketch or a song idea. Okay, so let's finally go to the console. Okay, so that's the console. Should be pretty familiar for most of you, I believe. But let's break down the basics. We have faders, of course, solos and mutes, uh, panorama controls, and uh, an output selection which is a cool thing, let me show you why. You can route to the monitor path, of course, but you can also route to any other output av available in the system. You see here all the ADATs and the line outputs. And if you select one of those, you can still mirror to the monitor output, which is really nice. Of course, you can rename the channels. So I'll put this one as Diogo's mic, okay. You can also link mono channels to, to make stereo channels, just right click and link. You can also hide channels. I'll show you a trick to hide a bunch of channels at the same time. You just go to menu, view, show and hide inputs, and you just click on this little green power buttons and the the green the ones that stay green of course will still remain visible while the grayed out ones will be hidden click done all right so that's quite a, a nice reduction it really helps to organize everything one more way to organize the console is to change the viewing options currently we are using overview you can set this to inputs, which will give the basics of the, the channel, such as gain, the unison plugin for the unison preamp. You can change from mic to line input. I'm not going to do this on this channel, of course, because this is me, so I'm gonna do here. So, okay, it's set to mic now, or set to line. You also have the 48V options, when applied, of course, the gamepad, 
the phase reversal and the high pass filter. Okay, so you can also set the console to show only the inserts. You can see a UAD2 plug in here. And this option also allows you to, to change the, the behavior of the plugins on the console. You can set them to monitor, which is this blue light right now. And this means that they are only going through the monitor path. They're not being recorded. If you want to, to actually record the sound of the plugins, the, the process sound, you need to click here. All right. Or you can set this globally here on the right side. On the overview option, you can also do this, but it's a tiny little dot here. Okay. There you go. All right, so much easier to do it here. Okay, so moving on, we have the sends. This allows you to send signals from each of the, the, the channels to the aux inputs or the cues. This is really nice, kind of reminds me of the real world consoles where you have sends on fader like the, the, the Yamaha digital mixers, for example. So let's talk about sends now. Okay, so I'll go back to the overview option. You can see sends per channel here or on the sends tab. You just need to click on the destination. You can send signals to the two auxiliary paths and to four queues. So go back to overview once again. Let's show the aux returns. I have the lexicon reverb on one, the tape echo on the other. So if I want to send signals to them, I'll just raise the faders. This is where you're going to build your headphone mixes using the four cues. So let's check out the destination for those Q outputs. You just need to click here on the right side. Let's drag it to here. All right, so we have the source, which is the Q. You can also set to mix and mirror to the desired output and to the desired headphone. Okay, so Q1 is going to go to ADAT 1 and 2, for example, which you, which is what I'm using to feed my sampler. So if I want to send my voice to the sampler, all I need to do is raise the Q1 and the sampler will receive the signal. It's very straightforward. It's not any different from other mixes, your DW. A couple more tips. Um, on the workflow before we move on to the monitor section. If you hold out, you can affect all channels. That goes for faders too, which is nice. Panorama. One more thing is the power modifier, which lets you quickly switch plugins on and off is really nice same for remove so you can easily remove plugins and also copy let's copy the vox box and paste it here and here okay so let's move on to the output and control room okay so we can control the monitor level here the main monitors you can also set the source to the mix, which is this entire thing going on here, or to one of the four cues. You can also enable the talkback mic, which you mentioned earlier. The talkback mic will also dim the main monitors. You can set the dim amount here. Okay. You can also set the main monitors to mono or mute them entirely. Instead of mono, you can have other functions here. I'll talk more about them in the part three of the walkthrough. I'll go through the 
advanced console settings and then we finally get some audio going because at this point you're pretty bored at my voice i'm sure so that wraps it up for us thanks for watching please subscribe and i'll see you next time bye bye